This is part three of the grade 12 information technology practical paper, paper one. And we're looking at the exemplar from 2018. And we are doing section B, which is the question two, which is the database question. This paper's theme is to do with gaming and doing a LAN party type of idea. Um, so the question two, section B is the the SQL and the database question is divided up into two parts. The first part will be the SQL part, and the other part will be just the normal database handling. Um, so before we get into the SQL, let's have a look at what uh, type of tables that we're dealing with in our database. So it's the LANS MDB database. The connection's been done for us, but there are two tables. There's a table about players, and there's a table about the games. And as you can see, there's, this is the details about the players. There is a player ID, a name, an email, and a date of birth. And they tell you what data types they are. Our player ID is the primary key. And then our games table, will be, there'll be a games index, which is our primary key, the game date, the player ID, obviously the player that played that game on that date, and their duration and their score. And so there we can see the details. And it's linked according to player ID. So the player ID from TV or players, is in a relationship with the player ID from TBL games. That could become important if we deal with a question that's got um, both tables involved. So let's go. They talk about the details. Yeah, we've got the SQL part, which is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing five questions on the SQL. Um, so let's start with question one. The, what, the last thing, just a little note, they've added a restore database button which is quite nice as they as if you do any changes to the database like a insert a delete or update and you want to get it back to its original state you can just restore the database that's quite a nifty little feature they've got here so let's go start um, the best tip I can give you with SQL is to look at the diagram to guide you not only in what it should look like with regards to your results but also look at the field names because sometimes you'll need to change the field names and that also gives you a lot of insight as to what type of query they're looking for. But the first one, they say all the fields must be displayed for all the players in the TBL player. So all the fields, so that's going to be a select statement. And we select in star and the records must be displayed in ascending order according to their name. So, so very simple, there's no real criteria. Yeah? So we're going to go to the um, actual form there. You can see the database, is, uh, there's nothing there that to be displayed. There's the form. You double click on the button and all the code has been done for you. All you have to do is write in the SQL in that little text field there. So I'm going to start with a select statement. We want to select all the fields. So it's select star. Then you've got to say from which table are we getting this from? We get from the TBL players table. And there's no criteria. So we don't have a where clause. But then after the where clause, we have what's called an order bar clause. And that's going to say which field do you want to sort it by and the question says we must sort it in ascending order according to name so just double check that the name field is called name so we're going to come here type in name and you could leave it like that because by default oh by default it'll go um, ascending order but we're going to just put the ASC just so that you know that it's ascending order if it was descending you would DESC for descending order so let's run it and see if it works so all that code will be done for you. It will add the SQL and then it will run the SQL. And that looks like the data that we want. Let's just double check. Yes, that looks pretty much like what we want it to look like. Okay, great. Now, next field, next question. Question two, we want to display just the name and the date of birth of all the players born in September. Okay, so that's a little bit more tricky. We only want those two fields, and we want this name and date of birth. That can only come from the, the tables with the players, so TBL players. But our criteria is we only want the year or the month, sorry, of the date of birth to be September. So it must look something like that. Okay, so let's see how we go. Let's go to, we are in question born in September so there we go we can write the code over there so we want to select I'm going to select we only want the name and the date of birth if I remember correctly that's only fields they want to display from which table from TBL players and then there's a where clause now the where clause is how do we say only in September well there is a month function 
which will, if we give it a date type of field in brackets, it will return the number of that month. And we do have a date field, that's the date of birth. Make sure that you've got it exactly the same as what it's spelt in the database. There you can see it's date, no spaces of birth. You've got to make sure that your fields are, or when you refer to fields, that you refer to them exactly how they're called in the database. So we're going to say date of, the date of birth there. So the month of the date of birth, that will return a number. So we want it to be September. September is the ninth month. So I just want that field to equal a nine. Now that is a integer field, so we don't have to put any double quotes or anything. So we're selecting those two fields from the TVL players and we condition if we get the month of the date of birth, it must equal to a nine. Let's see if that works. Okay. Okay, there we go. So let's check the results. Um, it looks pretty good, huh? Here we go. You can see the results are pretty much the same, although they're in a different order, but we do have the same results. Okay, so there we go. So they didn't say anything about sorting or anything, so we just do what they ask. Question number three, the average duration. Okay, the moment you see some sort of aggregate function, like an average or a count or a sum or a um, min or a max, you know you're going to be using the functions, those aggregate functions. Now, normally if it's just one little block with an answer, you can just say the aggregate function on a particular field. But whenever you have two fields and one of them is using an aggregate function, and this is the rule, whenever you've got two fields and one of them is an aggregate function. So there is a duration field. This is the details about games. So if you look at the the game's details going up here. So the duration and there's the game date. Okay. So the duration, we want to find the average duration. You will always use a group bar. So you're going to group all of those dates together and find the average for that particular date. And then group all those dates together and find the average of those dates. So whenever you've got two fields and one of them is aggregate, you will always group by the uh, the one that's not having an aggregate function applied to it. So let's go to the code. Let's go to question three. There we are. So we're going to select. We're going to select the. If you let's double check here, the game date. No spaces. So the select game date, and then we want to select the average now in excel it's average but in in access is avg of the duration field so that's the average of the duration field now we want to display that as you can see i said you must always look at what the the data looks like there you can see they display it as a heading average duration now that we need to actually specify and for that we use an as so I'm going to use the word as average duration, one word. If they did want a space, if they did ever want a space, then you must just remember to put square brackets around it. Otherwise, it might cause hassles. But in this case, they don't. They just want to have it as average duration, one word. So that will give it the title for that field. Which table are we getting it from? We get it from TBL Games. Okay. And our criteria, there's no criteria, but it is a grouped bar. So we want it grouped bar. And it's group bar, not grouped, sorry, grouped bar. And you always group it by the field that's not been having a calculation attached to it, like an average. So it's grouped by the game date. So group by one particular date and then average those durations. Then group by another date and average those durations. So let's just look at that. Let's see if it runs. Hopefully it all works. So average time. So there we go. We can see that we're getting results. It doesn't look like we want it to look. So let's have a look. Ah, values must be rounded off to one decimal place. Now we haven't applied that. Um, so let's go and change that. We need to round off this or round off or display only to some sort of decimal place. So let's round around this calculation so we want to round it and we're going to say comma 
one, which rounds it to one decimal place. So first calculate the average of the duration, and once you've got that answer, round it to one decimal place, and make that the average duration field. Let's see if that works. Uh, there we go. Ah, right, there we go. So that looks a lot better. If we look at our data, yes, that's looking much nicer. There we go. Fantastic. Okay, we're getting through this. Now, number four. Display the name of the player and the highest score of that player obtained in any game so far in a field called highest score. Okay, so we want the highest score, which means we want the, the max score. So that's also an aggregate function. Um, and you see we've got two fields. We've got the highest score. So we, there is a score field, I think, in the in the, the games table. So we want to find the max of that score. So because we've got another field, we're going to group it by the name. However, the if I remember correctly, that games let's go look at the games table has the score, but it doesn't have the name. The name is in the in the TBL players. So this looks like we need to use both tables. And for that, whenever you're using both tables, you always have to specify what are the fields that are linking the two. And there we've got player ID from TBL players is linked with the player ID from TBL games. Just because they're the same name doesn't mean that they're linked. They're linked using special features in Access. This could have been a completely different name, but it could still apply to the link, but that's fine. Okay, so we've got two tables and we've got a group by. It's all quite complicated, this one. So let's take it step by step. We're going to go to this one. We're going to select. First of all, we're going to select the name. And then we're going to select the highest score, which I would say would be the max score. So the max max function on score doesn't matter if it's capitalized I'm just doing that and we want that to be displayed what's our heading for that highest score one word so we want to display that as highest score highest score where are we getting this from we're getting it from two tables we're getting it from tbl players comma tbl games we're getting it from both tables now we put our where clause in. Is there any criteria? You might think, well, there's no criteria. There is. The moment you've got two tables, you need to specify what the link is. And while the link is tblplayers.playerid is the same as tblgames.playerid. That is the link. They both are linked to each other. So that's the where clause. And then last but not least, remember, we've got two fields we've got an aggregate function of one but the other one we don't so whenever we have it we have to group by the non-aggregate function uh, option so we're going to group by name i hope that works so we're going to get the name from tb or place we're going to get the score from games we're going to max the score display it as higher score where are we getting this from we're getting this from the two tables the moment you get two tables in you've got to say how they are connected well, it's the play ID of the one is the same as the play ID of the other. If there was different field names, you just use their particular names. But as long as you've got the right link, and then we group by the name. So let's run it and see if that works. Please work, please work, please work. Highest group. Okay, let's look at the results. That looks like it's pretty close, huh? That looks like it's pretty good. Great. Nearly there. One more to go. One more. We're nearly there. The end is nigh. So, well, that's not a good thing to say. <laughs> okay, so let's go. Last one. Add a new game that has the following as a game index to be adding to the TBL games table. Um, the game has, was played by a player with that ID on that date, and the player score was that, and the game lasted 250 minutes. Okay, so we must add a new game. So let's do that. That's going to be an insert SQL statement. So let's go and write in our SQL statement here. Now we're going to start off with the word insert. So that's how we start. Insert. Okay. Then we say into. Which table are we inserting? We're inserting into TBL games. Okay. And we're inserting. Now if you can, in the brackets here, list all the fields. If we are inserting everything into all the fields. Now let's just double check. We've got game index, we've got the player ID, 
we've got the date, we've got the score, we've got the duration. And if I go right up here, sorry for the little click there, not there, there. You could game index, the game day, the play ID direct. So we've got all the fields. We just need to make sure that we put them in the right order. So it's the index first, then the date, then the ID, then the duration, then the score. Make sure that we get them in the right order. If you want to do it in your own order, then you must specify in brackets the field. So you would say um, game index and stuff like that. But we, we, we've put it into each of the fields, so we're going to insert into them, and we're going to insert the values, and now we must put them in the right order and of the right type. And the rule is, if it's a number, you leave it as it is. If it's text, you put double quotes around it, and if it's a date, you put a hash around it, or hashtags around it. So, the first field that we're putting in is the game index if i remember correctly it's the game index which is a 76 which is a number so we're going to put in the number then the next one was the game date if i remember the date is the 24th of december 2017 um, if you remember the date over here you can see the format of the date that's the year co oh, dash uh, month dash month or dash day sorry and then so 24th of december so the day before christmas so we're going to say 2000 and what was it 17 dash Christmas or December 24th. Now that's a date, so we put hashes around it for the date. Uh, the next field is the player ID, which is HM008, which is text. So HM008, but because it's text, you put double quotes around text. And then the next field is the, I think it's the points, and then it's duration, if I remember. Points, then duration. No, I think it's actually duration, then points. So duration is 250 minutes, which is a number. We put it like that. And then the points was 6655, 6655, which is also a number. So there we go. If we had certain fields that we were going to put in, but we didn't have all the fields, then you would have to, over here, list all the field names like game index game date and so on you would have to list all of them in so that it knows which ones you are inserting into where but let's see if that works hopefully it works if it does work then it will execute the sql and then it will show a message of how many rows were affected which should only be one okay so let's go to let's add and it says one record, so that means it must have executed correctly. Um, we can't actually test it um, because it's not in the players. But if you had to, you could write a little SQL statement to go and check the um, state of the TBL games table and then see what the results would be. So it looks like it's all working. What I'm going to do, because I inserted something, I don't want to, I want to undo all the changes I made to the database. I'm going to restore the database so that we've got the original database back so that we can now move on to the second part um, of the database question, which is the normal database handling. For the other parts of this, this exemplar paper that we're covering, as well as other videos on Delphi, please go to our YouTube channel, um, subscribe, go follow us on Facebook, go follow us on Twitter, and remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.